Over the last few months of hammering rain, cruel frosts, and sometimes beating sun, there have been 10,000 tiny veg and fruit plantlets hunkered down and growing in a large poly tunnel over near Lawrence Weston in Bristol. I'm talking, of course, about the wonderful team at the Blaze Nursery Plant Donation Scheme, who have been busy bringing on these tiny plants in order to donate them to over 50 community growing groups across the city of Bristol. And it's finally happening in a flurry of activity this week. The vegetables and the fruit plants are finally at the size where they can be moved out of the nursery and planted up in these places and that's what we're here today to do. So we've come to Knoll West Children's Centre which is one of the drop-off locations for the plantlets that have been brought up in, uh, in the Blaze nursery and I'm here with Ellie who's one of the volunteers that have been involved in the project um, for the last few months. What have you been up to for the last little while or so well lots of emails lots of telephone yep. calls um but yeah um just getting in contact with local community groups um and then we we got um, a grant or some funding from sustainable bristol to grow ten thousand um veg plants um so i've just been talking to each group um community group and they've been letting me know what plants they want and um, so yeah, I've been getting in contact with them to so get their plant list and delivery date, and it's all come down to today. This busy week yeah. of deliveries. And yeah. um, what kind of community groups have been involved? At what, um, where are you heading to? Uh, do you know what? It's been so nice meeting people from all across Bristol. Each you know, um, each sort of community group. They're all so different, but got a like common goal to get back to in touch with nature, with real food, to bring their children along, um, and really just connect with you know, instead of a supermarket, you know, where the actual food comes from to grow it and then to, from sort of bed to plate sort of thing. So yeah, yeah it's been really, I've met some really nice people. I think it's really important at the moment to know where your food comes from because we're kind of dangerously detached from that a lot yeah. of the time. That we think of, of vegetables as being plastic and, you know, wrapped yeah. in plastic and pristine and actually like a lot of carrots that grow kind of hit a root and go forked or yeah. get like eaten by slugs or whatever, don't they? Yeah. So it's kind of realising that. And I've personally just got an allotment this year, which I've been oh, really brilliant. excited about and I've kind of experienced firsthand that amazing feeling of growing vegetables. Have you been involved in the actual growing or has it been the admin um, side? We mostly? have, yeah. I mean, I've got an 11-year-old an daughter and, and she really enjoys it and through visiting all the groups we got invited along to um, a barbecue and um, you know prime example about saying about food and everything my daughter's favourite um, is purple sprouting uh, broccoli yeah. and they had them some growing at the this community group we helped out on and she didn't connect that that was her favourite one from the supermarket because we literally cut it off the plant. That's so, um, amazing isn't it? Yeah and it was like I think it was on our plate within like 20 minutes of cutting it from the, yeah. the veg plant so that's so yeah. important and I also like connection to nature and realising that everything's part of you know everything's connected and yeah. you know, those caterpillars that are munching your cabbages and things are you know actually here and existing and yeah. that's really that's really important. Um, great well we won't keep you for too much longer, right, <laughs> um, but we want to have a quick look at the plants that you've been growing yep. up. Um, so let's have a look over here. What have we actually got? <laughs> well, on the list, there was like 10,000 different types that could choose, like different things. So here we've just got peppers. We've got, you know, your really hot peppers, Armageddon's. Oh, wow. And then we've got like four different varieties of tomato. Right, these are tomatoes. Um, yeah, they? they're tomatoes. So you've got ones called Sun Gold or a Sweet Aperitif. Mm. Lovely. Um, sweet peas, runner beans, French beans. All the beans. Um, yeah, so leeks. Courgettes. Courgette, yeah. Beetroot, uh, lettuce, Excellent. carrots, carrots, parsnips. Brilliant. So everything you could, um, oh, wide range of things. Fantastic. And these were grown yeah. from seed? Yep. Yeah. Grown from seed at Blaze Nursery and then brought on um, to this day. And this is yeah. just a small portion of them. Like, yeah, many, many like, we've got to get back <laughs> to deliver some more today. But um, Yeah, we won't keep much longer, but let's just quickly see if we can plant some up yep. if that's all right. all right great so now we're down next to the beds and yep. these are beautiful raised beds i'm here with joe who's been constructing yep. these beds over the last how, how long have you been it's been a couple of months yeah yeah and what what have these been kind of for are they, they're at the children's center still and and yeah. they're for the children to work on so my project is the children's kitchen which is a feeding bristol project um, we work all over the city with uh, children who live in areas of high food food insecurity mm -hmm. And we work with food clubs that run within early year settings where families can access uh, fair share produce. Um, so 
we're, the idea with this one is that we can actually grow fresh produce with the children in the nursery and engage their parents with it at the food club so that everybody's benefiting from not only the well-being of growing the plants and seeing them come to life but also eating them so my part of it is how to cook with this produce <laughs> amazing so the food that they're going to be taking home with their families is the food that they've actually been growing in the yeah. garden a lot of it so most of it is surplus from fresh air southwest um, but we'll also as these crops come into harvest we'll have obviously lots of kale lots of things like runner beans that mm. families aren't always confident about knowing how to cook it. Kids aren't so, always confident about eating them no. as well, are they? <laughs> so the children's kitchen work in t works in two ways. It works with the families to um, engage them with the cooking, getting them used to the cooking from scratch and cooking with what you've got. And also with the children in the nurseries so that they're familiar with fresh produce when they go home and they see it on the table. Amazing. <laughs> what an amazing project. Yeah, and like thank beautiful, you. beautiful beds. I'm very excited to be planting out the first of the yeah, kale. Yeah, the kale, yeah. So what am I doing with it? Just so we're I'm just gonna just really gently so that it doesn't um, damage the roots, just tap it out of here. So this is a um, collaboration with Incredible Edible Bristol. Um, so Luke's been building these beds for the last uh, couple of months. Um, and we've done everything we can to be as sustainable as possible. So we've got um, peat-free wool compost. Amazing. Um, we've got uh, really good um, wood that's going to last a good few years. And a bit of sunlight. Bit of sunlight, Which is yeah. important. <laughs> okay, so if you could, yeah, make a hole. And then you hole. need to bury it so that it's just below, so that the top, this bit, top bit here is just below the soil. So this week we're going to be planting the rest of the plants with um, all of the nurseries that we work at. The children are all under four, so we'll teach them how to do it gently without damaging the plants. Brilliant. What a wonderful skill to learn. Thank you so much for showing us all Thank this. you. It's a pleasure. Next up, we're off to the next drop-off point just down the road at the Inns Court Community Centre, where I'm going to meet Ella, who's been coordinating the project. just come from down the road at Noel West Children's Centre where we've been watching one of the first drop-offs and you're doing a similar thing here at Inns Court Community Centre, is that right? Yeah, so this is all part of the citywide scheme that we're running at um, Bristol City Council to support community food growing groups. So Inns Court Community Centre is one of about 50 groups that we're supporting through Blaze Plant Nursery. So we're growing veggies like you can see here and we've been donating them out to groups across the last couple of weeks all to support community food growing and sustainable food production in Bristol. Amazing, and you've been running this project from since last year when it started, and that was during COVID-19, first pandemic kind of wave, and that was kind of how it started, is that right? How, how did it all begin? And... Yeah, yeah, so um, so last year was the first time it happened, and it was, you know, unfortunately, it was in response to COVID, so we had a situation where the nursery at Blaze, which is run by, by Bristol Council, mm -hmm. Um, was closed so we couldn't get rid of any of the plants like you see here would have been going out to you know the nursery there's a shop being sold to the public couldn't do any of that so rod who runs the nursery had the kind of the quick thinking to basically get in touch with with myself and other members of parks and say look what can we do to to make sure this project doesn't go to waste that he's been growing for the last few months and um, and from that we then got in touch with community groups and just donated over about 5,000 plants that were growing in the nursery last year to all of the groups that we could get in touch with. Wow. Um, and yeah, we got to the end of the project last sort of summer um, and Rod sort of said to me again, he said, you know, should we just, should we choose to do it next year rather than it being a response to COVID? Should we actually choose to do it and get some funding to support it on a, on a bigger scale? So yeah, that's what we've done. And we've gone sort of, yeah, all out this year. So 10,000 plants, that's incredible. And the yeah. local like, authorities have been involved in supporting it with funding. And that's been a kind of process that's gone on since then. Um, has it been amazing to see like the impact on, on people's lives and like, in these groups? What's yeah, that been like? so we've, I mean, we've been in touch with quite a lot of the groups that we worked with last year and um, the same ones that we're working with again this year, which has been really lovely to see them, you know, having the benefits of last year's plants and yeah. gain confidence for food growing. So a lot of them this year have taken on more again and are working with their local food banks, food clubs. So rather than just supporting their immediate community, they're going out and producing food for yeah the wider community as well, Amazing. which is really lovely. So what are the kind of people that you've met over the last week that have been receiving these plants? What kind of different organisations have there been? Uh, it's a real mixture. So we've got people that are doing it pretty much on a very local scale, almost you know in their own back garden in some cases, but sharing it then with mm. you know, local communities really in need. We've also got school groups, so like Bannerman Road and Eastern and other schools that have got their own grounds within the school that they're growing and then doing sort of um, cookery lessons with the children and bringing the parents in to learn about sustainable and healthy food. 
we've got um, NHS groups which are working with patients that are suffering from head injuries. So part of the rehabilitation Amazing. is getting involved in growing and then you know learning from that as well. And then you've got things like this, which are much larger scale. So Inns Court is supporting, I think, eight food clubs across the city Incredible. that they're growing for. Amazing. It's just that kind of connection to nature that sometimes can seem quite hard to get in the middle of a city, but actually there are these pockets of nature and community activity that's going on, which is amazing to see. And it's part of a wider kind of Bristol food movement in general, which is built up from loads of different organisations. It's actually quite confusing. There's so many different things and projects going on. But this is um, this is to do with... Uh, the Bristol Food Network, right? And um, and other projects like uh, Feeding Bristol is a link to that and, and all of those things. And I think there's a campaign called Bristol Bites Back Better. I wonder if you could quickly just tell me about that as well. Yeah, so the, the Bristol Bites Back Better is the kind of overarching campaign that Bristol as a, you know, as a local authority and as a city is really pushing local communities to get, get on, on board with and to log what they're doing to support community food growing. So it's all part of the Going for Gold program which is obviously rolling bites back better is is this year's focus all about rebuilding connecting with nature getting back out there and doing what we can to support sustainable food growing and that's like you said it's involving organizations like feeding bristol also incredible edible which are another citywide like brilliant organization yeah. so there's loads of different organizations involved which is confusing but also brilliant because Amazing. it's yeah, yeah really interlinking and it's yeah. really exciting to hear about all these things and I think a lot of people that might be watching this might have not realized that there's so much going on and you know all of the parks the reserves the community gardens all of those things that are happening across Bristol just to finish things off I know you've got a really busy day of like more deliveries going on could you give us a bit of advice on how to get involved with those things like where where to start if you want to get involved in nature within the city of Bristol yeah sure so um I mean it really depends you know what what you want to do but I think the the best advice that we'd always say is to just start local so you know we've all got a park that is is our local park or somewhere that we would go to find that that green space so it's about thinking you know what can you do to support that that local park so it might not be necessarily food growing mm -hmm. but if you've got a local park or green space you can get involved in that find the local friends group the Bristol Parks Forum is a really good place to find your Online, local friends that, group. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a website um, called Bristol Parks Forum. Great. And all of the friends groups in Bristol are, la are listed on there. So they've got their contact details. Um, but also with you know these kind of community food, food growing groups, quite often they're linked in with parks groups. But also, you know, you can go to the Bristol Food Network to see if you can get involved and volunteer there as well. Amazing. So much to do. And it's really exciting to see what these fruit and vegetable plants are going to become. Thank you so much for all your work. It's no been problem. an amazing project to, to see. Well, it's been great to talk to Ella, Ellie and Joe about the Blaze Nursery plant donation scheme, which has been taking place uh, across the whole of Bristol. Um, and there are loads of other videos and interesting people popping up on the Bristol Festival of Nature site throughout the week. So make sure you check out all of the other videos as well.